the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, April 22nd, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, MSNBC smears Bundy supporters as insurgents and attacks the Drudge Report and InfoWars. Bundy tells conspiracy theorist and radio host Alex Jones that while he's not looking for a civil war, he is, quote, not in a negotiating mood. Meanwhile, the Department of Homeland Security continues to prepare for civil unrest as they are now getting ready to purchase 25 million rounds of shotgun ammunition. And a Green Bay police officer is under investigation for attacking a man for asking a question. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Well, once again, Alex Jones and InfoWars find ourselves at the center of another MSNBC hit piece. This time, they're taking Harry Reid's domestic terrorist claim a little bit further by calling Cliven Bundy supporters insurgents. This time, host Chris Hayes was lamenting the threat posed to the establishment by an Alex Jones, Drudge, Fox News, Rand Paul axis that threatens to rock the 2016 presidential race. He was implicitly siding with Harry Reid's claim that Cliven and Bundy and his supporters are domestic terrorists because he snarkily linked Nevada Republican Senator Dean Heller's labeling of those same Bundy Ranch advocates as patriots. He linked it to Alex Jones and Infowars, which he then described our site as a paranoid online haven. He then goes on to whine about the fact that Infowars stories, and in particular these stories relating to the Bundy siege, are routinely linked by powerhouse news aggregator The Drudge Report, and then they find their way into the mainstream GOP establishment and Fox News. Hayes termed this effect the Alex Jonesification of the GOP. Hayes calls candidate Greg Brannon's skepticism of the 9-11 Commission report as kooky fringe conspiracy theory. He allows some audio of candidate Greg Brannon speaking about this very thing. I'm a 9-11 truther, and I had a friend of mine ask me, show, or, or tell me, look on the internet, Google the Pentagon, and show me where the plane hit the Pentagon. Where is the plane? A Democrat Republican were the were the chairman co chairmen of the 9-11 Commission, and when they got done, they did not put their stamp of approval on the commission. They said there's data that we did not put in there. So things like this have to be asked. But true to MSNBC form, they love to throw around these accusations of kooky conspiracy theorists, but then they never show any evidence that proves their superior intellect, just like they called Alex Jones a racist, but then never offered up any proof of him ever saying anything racist. They never actually Google the picture of the plane hitting the Pentagon. So you know what? We're going to go ahead and Google that for you. Here you will see some images of the Pentagon being struck on 9-11 by a non-existent plane. This is why they didn't want to Google that picture because, come on man, Flight 77, where is it? Where is it? That, my friends, is not a conspiracy theory. That is a conspiracy fact. But even worse... After Hayes refuses to pull this picture up, which I'm hoping the people in the very small audience of MSNBC will go ahead and Google that picture as it's the caller suggested, Hayes brings in none other than Rory Reed, the guy that was tied to this whole scandal, who we exposed was involved with his dad, Harry Reed, and an ENN energy deal, the solar plant farm that was near Bundy's property. Well, he rolls this guy out to say, Hey, were you involved in some energy deal? And of course, Rory Reed, being the attorney that he is, conveniently responds in a way that he's not actually lying by saying that he wasn't trying to have any kind of deal on Bundy's land, which, as we have already explained, it was near that ranch. And we had showed you pictures of just last month, Harry Reed was breaking ground on another Nevada solar farm near the Bundy Ranch. So they are definitely involved in a lot of land grabbing going on there in Nevada. And coming up later in the show, I'm going to have a report breaking down just a few of the sketchy land grabs that the Reeds have been involved in over the last few years. It goes way back. They are basically 
using Reed's elected office to steal America and then sell it to their cronies around the globe. So that's why they're coming so hard on the offense and going on this MSNBC hit piece. But you know what? That's fine. Go ahead and do your little hit pieces on us, MSNBC. The only time you guys ever get any good ratings is when you talk about Alex Jones and Infowars. You've already lost more than 50% of your viewership. You're <laughs> crashing at a r astronomical rate. Meanwhile, whenever you do these hit pieces on us, it just drives a lot of traffic to our website. So thank you very much. And this will be a true testament to the power of the truth because I'm pretty sure that your audience is sick and tired of being lied to. They're sick and tired of being manipulated and they want the truth. And they're gonna seek out sites like Infowars and the Drudge Report for a little dose of reality. And it's about time. Meanwhile, while MSNBC is attacking American patriots, the Department of Homeland Security is once again building up its arsenal. This was reported that yesterday, the Department of Homeland Security announced it's seeking an ammunition dealer who can provide 25 million shotgun rounds to the agency over a five-year period. Now, more specifically, three million rounds of shotgun slugs per year and two million rounds of buckshot per year for the next five years. The report says the ammunition will be used as appropriate at all DHS or department component locations nationwide and outside the continental United States. Now, it'll be used as appropriate. So does that mean they'll be using it to shoot more cattle? Because that's how they deemed its use appropriate out there in Nevada. And we have already been just reporting that there is a massive arms buildup in federal agencies everywhere. And we can see that during this recent standoff at the Bundy Ranch, the Bureau of Land Management was well armed. It was an increased militarization of this government agency. And it is, you know, it's definitely something for us to be concerned about. And is this over militarization for terrorists? No, it is not about protecting the homeland. It is about policing the homeland. And clearer by the day, it is about conditioning you and your children to be completely subservient to the state. Take a look at this video that shows the TSA patting down a two-year-old and a six-year-old over and over again, despite a partial rollback of the pat-down policy in 2011. This is disgusting. Look at this little boy. He's clearly frightened. He's been taught his whole life never to let strangers touch him. And now here they're patting down this little girl. Oh, clearly, clearly she is got some explosives attached to her. And this isn't about safety. This is about conditioning. This is what this is all about. This is conditioning this mother to allow her child to be pat down and rubbed down. The woman goes around and touches the little girl's breasts. This is not about terrorism. This is not about protecting the homeland. This is about conditioning. Why are we letting this happen? Why are we letting our children pass through x-ray machines? And then if we don't want them to pass back and forth through x-ray machines, they have to get this intrusive pat down by the TSA. Why are we allowing this to, are we so afraid of their authority? This is ridiculous. This is why the situation at the Bundy Ranch happened because people are tired of this. This is not the end. It's definitely not the time to stand down, but it is time to start asking ourselves, when is enough enough? When do we realize, when do we wake up and realize that this is not about fighting terrorism? This is about fighting we the people. This is about keeping us in a cage. Now we've got this next video clip of an officer who's using excessive force. Now we see this time and time again this video basically just shows a man asking the cop a question. The cop starts getting rough with them. The guy uses some colorful language and then the cop just flips. He snaps. He has an explosive reaction. He throws the man, punches him several times. And then of course, this is totally uncalled for. This cop just tries to block the camera while letting his buddy beat this kid down. The kid wasn't wanted for questioning. He wasn't you know, part of that whole situation, he was just asking why was his friend getting arrested. But this is what they're being trained to do. They're being trained to respond in this way for the people they're supposed to protect and serve. And unfortunately, now we are seeing that it's not just in the cities. It is happening everywhere. In 
farms out in the middle of the desert over turtles, we're being told. It's, it's excessive. And obviously, it's clear why all these federal agencies are arming themselves, because they do know that liberty is rising. The people have had enough, and they're, they're starting to see that. And so that's kind of the fearful thing, and that's why we c consistently tell you to just stand down, cooler heads prevail, and don't allow them to turn you into the terrorists that they're trying to make us all out to be. Basically, what they're doing is just conditioning us because the technocratic elite, they just need a few more years of us believing and buying into their authoritarian system. They just need a few more years of us just believing that we're free so that we don't stand up against it because they know that at some point, it's going to be too late to turn back. They're going to have altered humanity too, too much. And at that point, it'll be too late for us. So they just have to keep us all in this daze for a little while longer. They're going to roll out the programs like this CRISPR, and they're going to have it be, you know, something that's kind of a miracle discovery. This CRISPR system is uh, basically a DNA editing technique, and it will cure diseases for the first time ever. They'll use the uh, DNA editor to cure liver disease or treat Down syndrome. Oh, but look, CRISPR might also be used to correct gene defects in human IVF embryos, allowing disorders to be ironed out before a baby is born. Now, I would love to believe that science is going to be used solely for the betterment of mankind, but we all know where this is going. They have been very open about how they see the population dwindling and how they're going to go about enforcing this population control. Let's have a little flashback to the movie Gattaca. Now, Gattaca was a 1997 science fiction film, very popular, and um, now it's basically becoming a reality as scientists will screen and abort human babies based on 3,500 genetic faults. Now, Gattaca was a movie where it was a futuristic world where human beings that were genetically engineered with certain desirable and superior genetic traits were given preference over natural-born humans who were considered inferior. So basically, when science starts open, openly tampering with human life based on subjective perceptions of which genetic traits are desirable and which are not desirable, well, there is no closing Pandora's box, and no doubt they're researching right now what DNA parts they can edit to wipe out patriotism or what characteristics are responsible for dissent. So, of course, those are undesirable traits in us subhumans. Now, coming up, John Bowne will have a report on some other mutants. Now, I'm not talking about the X-Men. I'm talking about the triple X-Men of Hollywood. Um, apparently, a new lawsuit claims that several heads of entertainment, including Disney TV and Fox Entertainment, were involved in a Hollywood sex ring where a man claims that he was raped as a teenager. So more on that later. But again, just to remind you how the ruling class is above all of us, above the laws they make to rule us, that we are meant to obey. President Obama is going to defy all of these emission concerns of the EPA by burning more than 35,000 gallons of fuel, or what, it, what equals 375 tons of carbon dioxide in one day by flying Air Force One, and that day is the 44th Earth Day. Now, the irony is not, is lost. Irony is lost on the White House as they declared Earth Day is about taking action <laughs> as the plane took off. And then the White House blog drones on about the impact humans are having on the environment that threatens our planet's future. But clearly, they don't mean themselves. It's just you and I who need to be being rationed. It's clearly not about saving the Earth through regulations, but about forcing the subclass into submission. And Obama's trip isn't just going to have an environmental cost. It's also going to cost the taxpayer to the tune of $300,000 for every hour that Air Force One is in the sky. So again, a little bit ridiculous. And isn't it about time that we all wake up to this manipulation on all of their propaganda placement? 
Now stick around because coming up, we've got some very special reports for you.